We began by laying down rough flooring in the attic to make working up there easier and safer. We attached 2x4s across the ceiling joists and laid sheets of OSB on top. Okay, so we managed to lug the handler up into the attic, and right now we're measuring the lengths of the struts that are going to be mounted to the rafters to hold the handler in place. Basically, 49 and a half to 15 inches. So we got our rods cut. Uh, basically, we've got <laughs> two uh, rods for the taller section and two shorter rods for the, the back section where the, the roof is sloped further down. It was a bit of a challenge to find transitions and duct boots that would fit our setup, but luckily we found a company in Oregon who made custom plenums and duct fittings specifically for our unit. They also designed our duct layout. Alright, today we've got our duct fittings in. We drilled pilot holes from the attic down into the rooms to mark where to cut our ceiling holes, making sure that one side of the boot would be flush up against the joist so that we could secure it in place later. We applied mastic on the seams of each of the boots to seal any gaps. And then attached each boot to flex duct. This was a multi-step process that involved zip tying and taping the multiple layers of the duct and finally insulating the boot itself.
Once the boots were fully attached to the duct, we carried them into the attic and placed them in the ceiling holes. All of the gaps between the boots and the drywall were sealed with mastic and then screwed into place. Finally, we strapped the ducks to the rafters in the attic, mapping out their path to the supply plenum. Once everything was in place, we could finish it off by attaching our registers. Unfortunately, we didn't cover attaching the actual supply plenum to the air handler. It did require some alterations to fit nice and snug, but once it was in place, we secured it to the open end of the air handler with sheet metal screws. Once the plenum was insulated, we attached the ducts. The next step was to attach the return side to the handler. This included a plenum, an air filter cabinet, and a transition from the air filter to the duct. The 16-inch return duct was a bit unwieldy to deal with, and we were working in some tight corners of the attic, but we made it work. The air handler has a pump that pushes the condensation up to a maximum of 27 inches, so we set up PVC piping that would run up out of the unit, 
across to the far end of the attic and out of the house. So today we're going to be uh, installing the line set, or at least uh, attempting to do so. We have to go uh, up the side wall of our house through an attic vent and uh, wrap through the attic. Basically at this point what we're planning on doing is running the electrical wire for the, uh, the unit and uh, stapling it up where we think we'll put the line set. Uh, we're going to mark it with painter's tape, measure the angles for anything that isn't a 90, and then we're going to do the bends on the ground. Then we'll try and install the line set through the hole. We used this tube bender to bend the pipes. It requires a bit of practice to figure out, but there are helpful videos on YouTube that can show you how to use it. Once we had the line set lined up to the ports on the unit, we cut it to size and flared the ends before attaching. Both attachments were secured using a special torque wrench fitting called a crow foot that allowed us to tighten precisely to the manufacturer's recommendation. Then we connected the thermostat to the unit as well as the main power supply which is running through a disconnect switch.
Once everything was set up inside the house, we moved on to the condenser, which we mounted to the concrete in the backyard. We attached the other end of the line set to the condenser, and then began multiple rounds of vacuuming and pumping nitrogen into the lines to remove air and moisture and pressure test. When vacuuming, we use a micron gauge to make sure we're reaching and holding the desired level of pressure during vacuum. We got settled back down. All of this is to ensure that the lines are dry and air and leak free. Once the lines were clear of any air and moisture and leak free, we were ready to open the valves releasing the refrigerant. Now all that was left was to turn it on and hope for the best. It's feeling cooler. Is it? Oh <laughs> It's feeling cool. Something's happening. Cold air. <laughs>